I wouldn't call it fascination. It's what life had given to me. At the beginning, my intention was not to write about Istanbul, but like all writers write about friends, people you know, humanity. Literature is first about humanity. But I came across humanity in Istanbul. I've been living there for 64 years. I see three, uh, through my life in 64 years, it grew from 1 million to 17 million. And I think it's an immense privilege in the history of humanity and literature to have witnessed a city growing from a million to 16 million. In France, Paris grew that much in 200 years. So I had that, ex uh, meaning eight generations, I had that ex uh, experience one generation. And then I, what I see, what I witness, um, I feel um, unique in the sense that not only my culture belongs to pre-modern, traditional, Asian, Muslim culture, are also intertwined with modernity, Turks' desire to belong to West. Um, I come from a family of westernized, middle-class family, so I am a combination of these two. But also, I am also lucky to have witnessed, to have witnessed to see that a city grow that much in a span of lifetime. Then there's so much to tell, so much to write about. Um, I was not self-conscious about being an Istanbul writer. After 1990s, when my books begin to get translated internationally, they all begin to call Istanbul writer, Istanbul writer. Natural, that's where I was born, that's where I was, that's where I am still is. There were some political times I ran away, but I returned. Um, and, I, and I will tell, continue to tell its stories. It's natural that I write about it because this is the best place I know. I know its, its characters. I know its history. There are some quarters, neighborhoods that I, uh, with my brother, with my brother, sometimes we say to each other, well, what was that sh place? What shop was it? Oh, 10 years ago, what shop, what, what? You know, uh, street by street, especially my neighborhoods, I know. Uh, I follow, I care about. I have a huge library of Istanbul books, but it didn't start with a um, program of to be an Istanbul writer. I began to self-conscious in mid when I was 45-ish. Then I said to myself, I'm getting self-conscious about being an Istanbul writer. But then, okay, uh, self-imposed desire to represent it intervened later. Now, for example, in Strangers in My Mind, I'm writing about lower classes, immigration to Istanbul, how people did shanty houses with their own hands, which I saw when I was 10 years old, uh, street wonders, which I saw when I was, you know, uh, a child. Then I did interviews. My books are circle and circle and circle, getting swallowing up the whole city. At the beginning, I was only writing about middle classes, in the uh, um, rich people, upper middle classes, westernized classes. Then I added more political, uh, politics, the city, the stre streets. That I wrote my memoir, also not only my my um, Istanbul, but also the Istanbul of its texture, its qualities, travelers' notes about it, how, what it means, the spirit of the town, so to speak. Then I moved in later books about the margins and tried to capture my last book, A Strangers in My Mind, is a panoramic uh, description, a novel, of course, about the town covering 40 years. Earlier novels also uh, takes place in Istanbul. Uh, I, this is what I knew, this is what I wrote about. It, in the end, it got to be self-conscious, but I avoid two things. I may be nostalgic about my childhood, but not nostalgic about Istanbul, the old Istanbul. Se uh, um, um, s second thing, I don't glamorize, sugarize, romanticize my relationship with, uh, uh, with the town. My, the most frequent question I always get is, do you love Istanbul? You love your Istanbul? No, no, no. I say, it's like my body. It's like our families, my relation, our fr relationship, what is given us by God, by history. It's, I don't uh, glamorize it. You may think that, say, in my books, I'm glamorizing, but then there are horrors happening, the political struggles, poverty, repression, um, 
ethnic a sort of ethnic cleansing of non-Muslims, ethnic cleansing of uh, Shias, Turkish uh, Alevis, then uh, main boulevard destruction of uh, burning first burning down of wooden houses. I saw it in my childhood. Would go out and watch with amazement, uh, no sorrow really. It's fun to watch. I'm, I'm a child. Then three-story houses disappearing. Uh, apartments of my childhood now are disappearing with even 15 stores are coming. So I followed, followed. And my sense of history also, uh, um, the fragility of human life, the, that we are limited, uh, that generations come and go, they build their architecture, their things, and then that a huge, immense wave of history, demography comes, destroys your buildings, your memories, what is left of your life. Uh, toward, you know, at 65, my characters and the strangers in, my, in mine reach that maturity or that sadness. But at the beginning, I was more middle class, nostalgic about the town, and uh, uh, safely wrote about this inner circle that I grew up. And then I make the circles bigger, 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 as I also trust myself about representing other people, uh, about uh, poor people, immigration to Istanbul. I'm not at all trying to say or to reduce you to being an Istanbul writer. On the other hand, we're not born writers. Uh, so I'm thinking the stories of your childhood, the Istanbul of your childhood, was that a part of turning you into a writer later on? I don't think so. I think I, the, what, what made me a writer actually, uh, uh, ironical, is a desire to be a painter. I explain this in my autobiographical Istanbul book, where I describe how I, how, uh, the days that in my teenage days, even when I was a high school student, I would take my simple camera, sh take photos of the streets to paint, to, uh, to help uh, for paintings I was doing in the manner of Pizarro, Utrillo, street scene, snowing, these things that I liked and, I, and everyone thought that I would be a painter. I prepared myself to a solitary life of an artist, but some a screw was loose in my head at the age of 23 as I wrote in my autobiographical Istanbul. From painting, I switched to uh, writing of novels. And, and what prepared for me for literature, actually, preparation to be a artist, a painter. Uh, uh, the life of the artist was prepared for me. I to live a solitary life in a room, either painting or writing books. I was ready for that. That was the beginning of me as a novelist. Of course, I, at the age of 19, 18, I began to read a lot and begin to have suspicions of being a painter in Turkey, in Istanbul. Uh, these things led uh, for, for me to write. Also, uh, the, my father reading books all the time and talking sweetly about that probably influenced me too. Mm -hmm. It's because I have this picture of Istanbul being an enchanted city with so many small quarters and stories happening there. Yes, so many stories to tell, but there's not a one single story. Uh, uh, my, um, but is there a melody of the city? Um, a tune, a kind of an atmosphere? That it's, uh, the f uh, I dramatize what I feel about the city, perhaps, by Hüzün, the, uh, uh, especially be, um, between 1950s to uh, 20, uh, end of 20th century. I felt that we are living at the edge of Europe uh, with a desire, especially middle class secular aspirations to be modern and European, uh, to belong to Europe, while the poverty, uh, the strength of history, religion, and by the tradition, the city was not that European. And the feeling of being poor, sad, uh, at the edge of Europe, Add to it that melancholy of ruins of Ottoman Empire, burning houses, a immense metropolitan city, the capital of an Ottoman Empire, decaying to be a provincial, not provincial, but a, a city uh, uh, 
in, in a republic which was run by Ankara reduce its glamour while it's the texture of old uh, glamorous times stayed and the decaying texture marked my spirit, so to speak. The melancholy in my books, especially in Istanbul, in Museum of Innocence, in my early novels, the sadness of being in a place which looks beautiful but seemed to have no future. That all this had changed in the last 15 years, I've been living in Istanbul 65 years. The uh, uh, change in the last 15 years is bigger than the first 50 years. In fact, when I was 30, 25, the feeling is that, uh, that this place will never change. They are getting rich in other places. We are do uh, stuck and doomed here. And that is also associated with the feeling of melancholy that I associate with a sort of social resignation, what Japanese call nobility of failure. Oh, um, it was overabundant, intertwined with images of burning houses, Ottoman decay, poverty combined with imperial glory fading away. These are things that I care about. I care about failure, uh, decaying modern, modernist architecture, or I care about colonial uh, Indian buildings where they are falling apart because these are things that perhaps remind me of my Istanbul of my early days. But that also is being washed up, cleared apart by the new developments, high rises. Now the city is getting cosmo uh, again cosmopolitan, not in the last three years, two years. And it's also uh, new people are coming and going, ethnic cleansing of the Christians, Armenians, Jews now followed with many people are coming, ex-Russia, Arabic countries. It is a hub for the many nations coming and going. History is changing and changing and changing. What I learned in 65 years is that don't hope for continuity. Don't aspire to, uh, don't hope, naively hope that your memories will be preserved and people will be worshipping and care, paying attention. Just learn to be, the, um, uh, uh, that in the end everything will be washed away. If you learn not to aspire too much, resignation, that helps. Perhaps my book, uh, this is uh, the way I thought about the city matured me up perhaps. This is what the wisdom I wrote uh, about and I gained from the city, which I expressed especially in my book Istanbul. But I want to write its continuation, other volumes. In the first volume, I wrote about its landscapes, its streets, its urbanscapes and what they meant to me when I wanted to be a painter. Now I want to write more about interiors, how objects, rooms also change, also uh, marking the, the spiritual change or uh, anthropological change in the city too. Mm -hmm. Istanbul is a city also where different cultures meet. You can say it's a melting pot or east and west, they meet each other. When you received the Peace Prize in Frankfurt some years ago, you reflected about the ability of literature giving us the ability to put ourselves into the place of another. This is what you do in your books as well. You are not on Pamuk, but you try to imagine your characters. Your life. Don't we read enough in our world? Because it seems that we, in both society and political questions, have kind of maybe not lost, maybe not ever had the ability to understand the other. We kind of want to underline our own position all the time, instead of trying to understand the other person, the other culture. So, don't we read enough in our world of today? Um, novels are talking about ourselves in such a way that the reader thinks we are talking about others, or talking, writing about others in such a way um, that the reader thinks I'm telling a private truth about myself. Balancing me and the other is the act of writing a novel and it's based on compassion, human capacity to identify with others, to see the world through others' point of view, to have mercy to other people's problems. This is what the art of the novel 
uh, is based on. Humanity, human beings have the capacity to dream other people's problems. Uh, and when they ask me about politics and literature, it's not that I make political comments or as Bertolt Brecht had, don't, when they refer to politics, don't show your party card, sh show your books. And Art of the Novel is based on humanity's capacity to, to see the world through other person's point of view. Um, we write about women, we write about people who are not like us by sex, geography, culture, history, religion, personal trauma. Once we begin to do that, um, it's fun to see the world through others, and it's also very political. Can your books help in a situation where, compared to some years ago, it seems right now that East and West, they are more confrontative than they have been. There's also an issue with Turkey and the European Union, which you also talked about 10 years ago. I don't believe in clash of civilizations. Yes, civilizations may be different, but if you live in my part of the world, if you live in Istanbul, that you see things come together harmoniously. All my life I see that the roots of things are, is not important. In the end, um, it is humanity's or people's desire to use things. You don't say, oh, electricity comes from America, I don't want to use it. Or this art of the novel comes from Paris or London, it's Western, I don't want to use it. You don't say that. Or this tradition comes from Arabia, I don't want to be associated with it. You live like, you mind your own business, you live your life with what is given around. And the geography, my geography is such that everything is at the edges of Europe and at the beginning of Asian civilization, if there is one single Asian civilization and one single European civilization. Um, in the end, though I'm writing about East, West, uh, um, I don't believe they're in their clash. That, that it, it's the politicians who impose one single identity, one single route should be um, for all identities. I believe in the polyphony of various cultures and, and Istanbul is made of very many voices, palimpses of civilizations. Um, I think things combine in such a texture, things are, uh, uh, if you have more than one spirit, more than one mind, you are more clever. So, can culture achieve something where kind of politics stop right now? Should we uh, read each other's books much more? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, um, uh, of course we should reach each other. Uh, 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 it's, you know, uh, you're asking me, I'm a writer, and you're asking me, should we read books? You, get, uh, you may guess my answer, but then we should I'm reading books not only for political purposes, for to serve peace. I'm writing books for also private enjoyment. People read books not for great causes, but because they see that reading a book makes your life richer. Not necessarily all books are also for peace. Some books are also promote bad things. Reading a book is a solitary thing. Uh, not necessarily all books uh, also promote peace, culture, getting together. The point about writing books is you express yourself thoroughly, deeply. I, um, uh, I'm not saying that culture or book reading is a solution to all problems. I'm not writing my books for that kind of utilitarian purposes. In my interviews, I promote peace, liberal values, but that's it. I write my books for the person, for the good reader who jumps in to the sea of worlds to have uh, experience another universe. And what, uh, um, uh, I'm not promoting the political consequences of th that universe. In the end, it's an uh, alternative world in itself and that's enough. Of course, I hope that it's also uh, the results that will come out of my books will be politically correct, but that's not my first motivation, so to speak.